I'm Dr. Shashi Tiwari, former professor in Sanskrit, University of Delhi. The topic of my paper is the homeland of Rigvedic Aryan, Sapta Sindhu, the literary evidence. This is the region of Rig Rigveda period where rivers are flowing. This paper focuses that area of seven rivers was the homeland of Rigvedic people. Most of the findings and discussion are based here on the literary evidence from the Rig Veda. The, there are so many questions related to Vedic people, particularly the hunt for their original land has been a topic of research among Indologists and historians since 1786 AD. It was emphasized that the cities of Harappa and Mohanjo-Dado came to be an end by Aryan invaders. Aryan invasion was sometimes called an Aryan migration. In either case, Harappans were declared as non-Aryans. Now many historians and Sanskrit scholars are refuting these theories on the basis of various categories of evidence. I think that the homeland of Aryan was Indian continent and Anya themselves were Harappan. According to me, the early period of Vedic civilization is 5000 to 4000 BC. Vedic civilization is the earliest civilization in Indian history for which we have written records. The Vedic mantras present an extraordinary picture of culture, religion, philosophy, economics, polity, ritualistic practices, and scientific knowledge of the Vedic people. It looks such an organized and developed society based on agriculture, arts, craft, trade, industry, education, characterized by a deep interest in nature and environment and moved by spiritual urge. Important point is that the authors of Vedas never say any word about their migration or invasion in the whole of the Vedic literature. So according to the literary evidences, Vedic people were inhabitants of India only, the land of Sapta Sindhu and Saraswati. Evidence from within the Veda suggests that the Vedic people were acquainted with the seven rivers and especially with the mighty river Saraswati. References related to the terms Sapta Sandhava and Sapta Sindhushu in Rigveda show a rich historical tradition of Vedic people in that area. The country of seven rivers is very dear to them. They have great praise for Sapta Sindhava and Saraswati. In the Rigveda, they praise Saraswati in many words many verses and there we can say clearly that it is the name of a river which is invoked in many mantras as in this mantra Ineve Gange Yamune Saraswati the name of Saraswati is coming in sequence with the Ganga and Yamuna. Sapta Sindhava, Sapta Sindhushu these terms are variedly used. Saraswati Saptadi Sindhu Mata Saraswati said the Sindhu Mata, it is the mother of all rivers. It has superiority among other rivers also. As in a mantra, it is said, Ambitame, Naditame, Devitame, Saraswati. It used to surpass all streams by Her Majesty. Uttara Sakibya, she is more than his, her fellow uh, uh, rivers. Prabhavana Rathyavyati. It goes like a powerful chariot. Eka Acheta Saraswati Nadinam. It is Eka. It is Adityaya. It is all alone a great river. So like that, in the mantras, we find praise of Saraswati. One mantra says, Giribhya Samudra Tiyati. It flows in the northwest India, originating from the Himalayas and ending up to ocean. 
Vedangi Yasta has written in the Vedangi Nirukta, Tatr Saraswati it etaste, Nadiva Devta Vachanid Mahavanti. It is like a river, it is like a Devata. So he is telling that uh, both Nadi and Devata should be understood by the term Saraswati. It is proved that Saraswati is neither a mythological river nor a mythical river, but it is a river. In the Rigveda, we find that it, it uh, talks about three sets of seven rivers. It means 21 rivers are associated with Saraswati. In Vajasana Sanghita, we find that uh, there is a talk of five rivers joining the Saraswati. So all this proves that in Rigveda, Saraswati is regarded as a mighty river, which is very dear to Aryans. The core region between Saraswati and Drishadvati rivers were called Varas Prathivya, Nabha Prathivya. It is the navel of the earth, it is the navel of the best place. It also has been known as Kurukshetra, the land of the Kuru people. In the Rigveda, it does it see that there is a lot of matter about Saraswati and it is very clear in the form of a river only. Uh, just in the Atharved also we can find few examples. It is Saptasindhva region and uh, where people are acquainted with the seven rivers. They frequently use the term Saptasindhu in Rigveda and Athar in Atharved also. Seven rivers or northwest region are Satilaji, Vipasa, Iravati, Chandrabhaga, Vitasta. Five rivers of Punjab and Sindhu and especially Saraswati. This is the region of Sapta, Sandhava, Sapta rivers, seven rivers. Seven rivers, the, these terms are used and the, they are coming from Himalayas and they go up to the ocean. So it, they are very mighty and powerful rivers. Other six rivers are called wife or mother of Sindhu. So Sindhu river me, me, seems important among them as all are called by its name. Sindhu is a pariyai of a river. So the one point, the first point is that it has deep connection with Saraswati. Vedic people have deep con connection with Saraswati. The depiction of mighty Saraswati and references related to terms Sapta Sindhva and Sapta Sindhu Shin Rigved show a rich historical tradition of Vedic people in that area. Second point is about the land and its description is in Bhumi Sutta, where what is de de described is just like the, they are describing the land of the India. It has six seasons, colorful fire, sea, rivers are on it, mountains are there. So if we will study the about the land of the Vedic people, we will find it similar to the land of the Bharat version. The third point we may take about the food. The principal food of the Rigveda garden consists of barley, flour and its various preparations, rice, cereals, fruit, honey, butter, curd, and other preparations of milk. Barley was offered to gods. There was two staple crops cultivated by the Rigvedic Aryan, one in winter or the spring, and the other during the rainy season. The seasons, grain, agriculture, all this food, the home, homeland of Aryan, as the region of the seven rivers near Punjab. The third point can be taken as there is no reference of salt means lover. But the Aryans were familiar to that, to that uh, substance. It is very clear when there is a mantra which says they, uh, they are feeling thirst, Trishna, in between the waters of ocean. So why they are feeling th thirsty? Because of the salt in the water. They cannot use it. So it means they were familiar with the that substance, but uh, salt description is nowhere in the 
वैदिक संहिता फोर्थ पॉइंट में बी टेकन अबाउट ऑर्नामेंट्स वट इज द डिस्क्रिप्शन ऑफ ऑर्नामेंट्स एंड ज्वेलरी इन द रिग्वेदा and we will find that it is similar to the uh, harappan excavations what you find there the both civilization both people used to be decorated by head from head to uh, leg head ear neck finger chest hands waist and legs all these they used to decorate with the items made of metal mud or stone so here we again find similarity to the uh, in, between the both civilizations the fifth point we taken about houses generally it is said that the rigvedic people were living in the mud houses but we find that they are describing the houses which are ma made of uh, great materials which is very strong which uh, has uh, protection from every season in one mantra varun is praised that uh, he should uh, give a house of uh, to live but not a house made of thick mashu varun mad me amgriham instead of he asked to parjane dev to give tridhatu sharanam it means three story dwelling so houses are very big and they are made of uh, istika स्टोन एक्सेट्रा टू शाला सुतादार इन द रिग अथर्व वेदा एंड विच ऑल्सो डिस्क्राइब अबाउट द बिगर स्ट्रॉन्ग एंड सिस्टमेटिक हाउसेस द सिक्स पॉइंट मे बी टेकन अबाउट क्रिएचर्स इफ यू विल स्टडी द डिस्क्रिप्शन ऑफ बर्ड्स एंड एनिमल्स ऑफ द इक्वेटिक टाइम सिमिलरली द डिस्क्रिप्शन ऑफ प्लांट्स एंड अर्थ ऑफ दैट टाइम we will find that the place and the period of the vedic culture is, looks like same which we are living at the time mm -hmm. is particularly in the region of uh, subsandav pradesh undoubtedly these do indicate their indian origin so conclusion is that the description of saraswati and then of ornaments jewelry weapons society education houses birds animals and plants food and other things are relevant to decide about the place and period of the vedic people which was undoubtedly the area of saraswati and sapta sindhu om shanti